This Juneteenth, we celebrate the 155th anniversary of emancipation. This is also a day to remember and reflect that we have so much work to do, especially when it comes to addressing this nation's history of systemic racism. Universities ideally serve as platforms of outward social mobility. And unfortunately, this also means that universities can serve as barriers to opportunities and as instruments of segregation that concentrate privilege. So it is vital that we do a better job of increasing access to a broader segment of society. And that's especially true for careers like engineering, because I believe the skill set of complex problem solving will be in higher demand in the future. There's never been a better time to be an engineer, which means I truly believe that greater access to higher education and careers in STEM and engineering can help accelerate some of the culture change that we need to see to reverse the impacts of systemic racism. This is a legacy for more than 400 years. You see, as engineers, we design and build systems, systems that improve the human condition. And when we think about engineering systems, we traditionally focus on infrastructure systems or sustainability or energy or innovation. But we also have to understand that racism is also a system. Racism is a subset of culture, inequity, and insularity. It's a system. And it's important that we not conflate racism with diversity and inclusion. They're not the same thing. You see, what I'm talking about here is systemic racism. And systems and structures that have procedures and policies and biases that disadvantage African Americans. That's the core driver. That's the root cause. So the lack of diversity and inclusion is a derivative of that root cause. We wouldn't need such focus on diversity and inclusion if it were not for systemic racism. Now, personally, I've wondered since the time I was a young engineering student why there has been over the years such little progress in the numbers of African Americans in engineering, especially in graduate school and in the professorate especially considering that we've spent more than $30 billion since the 1990s on diversity and inclusion initiatives, especially by agencies like National Science Foundation and NIH. So why is there so little progress? I suspect part of the answer to that is that we've been having the wrong conversation. We've been talking about diversity and inclusion when the real conversation should have been about the root cause of systemic racism. And, and the costs of this legacy are, are immense for all of America. You know, if we look back at the history of black innovation, for instance, after emancipation in 1863, we see that there was tremendous growth of this country economically. Dr. Lisa Cook, uh, who's up at uh, Michigan State University, took a deep dive into African American patent disclosures which is one measure of innovation. She looked at a period from 1870 to 1940. And she found that from 1863, there was an exponential growth in patents among African Americans until a peak was achieved in 1899, where progress certainly dropped off. Now, I'd like to point out that this time period, 1863 to 1899, was also the time when our first African-American graduate, William Hunter Damon, was finishing up as a civil engineer here at the University of Pittsburgh. He worked in railroads. He was in civil engineering. That was in 1893. So he was in this period. The question is, why, did, why was there a certain downturn in knowledge generation in 1899? But Dr. Cook found a correlation between segregation laws and racial violence and African-American innovation as measured by patent applications. You see, in 1896, there was Plessy versus Ferguson, which upheld legalized segregation, separate but equal, which furthered the growth of systemic racism. And that was coupled by upticks and lynchings and massacres, especially in the Deep South, such as the Wilmington, North Carolina massacre in 1895, 
the Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre in 1921. Uh, every one of these events had a detrimental effect on innovation for black Americans across the nation. I mean, how is it possible when you fear for your survival to innovate? And why would you trust a system that has demonstrated time and time again, it's not gonna be there for you to protect you. Why would you trust in that system to protect your knowledge discovery? You wouldn't. So what else did she find in her studies? Well, she found that the country missed out during this period um, in over 1,100 patents and contribution to GDP that would have equaled a small size European country. And the imprint is still here because what was hard for me to believe that even in 2020, per capita, patent disclosures by African Americans, the peak was still 1899, 1899. And so we continue to bear the imprint of this legacy. Now, I'll imagine a world where Blacks, underrepresented minorities, all have greater access to a great quality education, especially in engineering, and especially at a young age. And I strongly feel that can help break the chains of racism. But this goes beyond addressing diversity and inclusion issues. Simply creating a more diverse environment won't do anything to root out the systemic racism in our schools, our workplaces, and in our communities. What it means for a school like ours, the Swanson School, is reshaping our programs and our curricula and moving beyond our traditional focus on technical competence, just on technical competence, to really add focus on cultural competence. Now, ultimately, if we are to maximize human potential, having a safe, welcoming environment is absolutely vital for knowledge generation and for learning. And I'm certainly committed to making sure that the Swanson School and the University of Pittsburgh is the best place for individuals to come and do their best work. I want us to imagine that future and to create that future. We need to make sure that we use this opportunity to shift our awareness and our commitment to real change. As Maya Angelou always said, we should always do the best we can until we know better. And when we know better, we need to do better. And it's time for us to do better. And I know we will. Hail to Pitt.